name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Part of what makes life worth living uh, is our relationships. It's, it's possible to go into a cave and survive. It's possible, for a while anyway. But even if you go into a cave and try to live as a hermit in a cave, somebody has to bring you food. Somebody has to bring you water. And somebody has to help clean out your waste. I mean, even a hermit can't really live alone, right? Part of what is essential in our life is relationships. And in fact, I would argue that that is mostly what people live and die for. That's mostly what we live and die for. Now, sometimes relationships can get bumped by an idol called an ideal, right? We get some ideal in our head of the way things ought to be, should be, some, some image, and we bow down and worship it, and we sacrifice to that ideal the relationships that God has given us. It's a, it's a really sad thing when that happens. But God has come to us. He has come to us. I don't know why I said that. It was on my mind. God... God, and this is what I wanted to say, God has come to us in order to have a relationship with us. God has come to us so that we could know him, just like we know the other people in our life whom we love. That's why God came to us, so we could know him and love him we could have a relationship with him. And he came not, not as, uh, you know, this blinding light. How can you have a relationship with a blinding light? He took the form of a man, of a human being. He became like us. He became one of us so that we could know him. And because he became one of us, we have his picture. And these are the icons, right? These are the saints. These are the holy ones who also knew him. And we can learn how to know him better through their example. But you know, at the end of the day, you can do church, you can do all the religious things. You can fast. You can, do, you can do it all. But if you don't nurture your relationship with Christ, right, in a way that works for you, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like every husband and wife. There's no formula. Wouldn't it be great if there was just a formula for a husband and wife? Just... Apply these 12 steps and you'll have a wonderful relationship. No, you've got to fight it out yourself. You've got to work it out. You've got to find out what works for you. That's what makes a relationship. And the same thing in your relationship with God. Yeah, the church has prayers. You can say these prayers. We have icons. We have things you can do. And they're all pretty helpful. But at the end of the day, you've got to fight it out yourself. You've got to have a relationship with God. You've got to know Jesus Christ. And what works for you may not work as well for someone else. Right? And I always use my wife and I as an example here. Because my wife, she likes to uh, read these long Akathis hymns. And she prays painting. Painting for me is part of hell. I, I don't, 
Like, you know, Bonnie tried to teach me to paint once, and she said, now draw a circle. It was torment. It was torment. Draw a straight line. It's hell. I can't draw a straight line. All right? But she actually prays and draws near to God by painting and, and saying Akathis hymns. I, you know, to tell you the truth, I will pray an Akathis hymn now and then, but I kind of find them boring. They don't really, I'm sorry, I know, isn't that sick? <laughs> I, I'm a terrible sinner. They don't work for me very well. Well, well, Father, what works for you? I read Maximus the Confessor. Maximus speaks to me. I get to know God through reading the fathers, like Maximus the Confessor and St. Isaac the Syrian, and reading the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. It works for me. I kind of connect with God with this more, through this more rational part of my brain. I, I know I'm kind of weird that way, but God is so good that even weird people like me can know him. It took me a while to fight it out. It took me a while to figure out what worked for me. And it took me a lot longer than that to be at peace that I wasn't like my wife. To be at peace that I'm not like someone else. A wise father, a wise spiritual father once said, I think it might have been my own spiritual father, Father Gregory, but I don't actually remember who said it, said, when you stand before God, God is not going to ask you, why weren't you more like so-and-so? That's not what he's going to ask you. He's not going to ask you, why weren't you more like Saint so-and-so? Why weren't you more like your mother? Why weren't you more like your sister? Why weren't you more like that person over there? That's not what he's going to ask you. He's going to ask you, why weren't you more like yourself? Right? Because he made you as a beautiful flower in his garden. Right? You have a role to play, but you can only do it if you're yourself. So I want to encourage you to uh, venerate the icons. It's Triumph of Orthodoxy Sunday, and I forgot to tell everybody to bring icons today. See what a lousy priest you have? But God... Even God even provides salvation for me. And if God will stoop so low, yes, that low, as to provide salvation for a priest who can't even remember the triumph of Orthodoxy Sunday, right? Just think, he has salvation for all of you. But just like any relationship, you got to work it out. You got to push. You got to try. You got to compromise. You work on your relationship with God, and He'll come to you, and you'll know Him, and you'll have peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son.